Okay, so you've just worked through a whole bunch of different examples in your browser of um, how to use R to um, make plots and to, to save values as variables and to assign them as variables. Um, you're not going to typically do work in your browser. That's just a way of teaching you how to write this R code and see what happens. You're going to do most of your work inside a program called R Studio, um, which when you open it up for the first time will look something like this. Um, on the assignments page that you read um, for pre in preparation for today, um, you notice that um, you, ha or you had to install a couple of things. You had to install R itself and then R Studio. And so the analogy that I used there um, to explain the difference is that R is kind of like the engine um, that runs all of the calculations and generates the plots and, and does kind of the hard work for you. Um, the reason you could use R in your browser for the different examples is because it's running R behind the scenes on a different server and then spitting out the output into your web browser. Um, so typically you don't just run plain R though. Um, you use R Studio as kind of the fancy car on top of the engine that lets you see um, the plots that you're spitting out. It lets you see the variables that you've saved. It lets you type things in separate documents and then run those documents inside R. So you're not hand typing everything all the time in R, which which makes life easier. So when you open R Studio, it has specific sections of the interface here that do specific things. So when you initially open it, you'll have this giant section on the left called the console. And this is where you can type R code and stuff happens. So if we come here to the console and type 2 plus 2 and run that, the answer is 4. Um, so R is just a big glorified um, calculator now. We'll zoom in a little bit more here. Um, so you also, in the, in the RStudio primers that you were working through, you learned how to assign values to variables. And so if we want to make something called like my cool number, we can assign that. We use the backwards arrow um, pointing back to it. And so we'll say my cool number is 5. So if we hit enter, now we can later type my cool number. And if you notice, as you start typing it, it will pop up kind of this, this menu here showing that it exists and you can do stuff with it. So if we click on it, or if you hit tab, it'll finish it all the way. And so now we can hit enter and it'll show five. Um, we can do stuff with it like my cool number plus three, three, it should show eight. So that's good. Um, so we can type R code here and it'll do stuff um, for us. The nice thing about RStudio though that you couldn't see when you were doing the R code in your browser is that if you made a variable called my cool number, you probably forgot or you will have forgotten later on that that thing exists. In RStudio, there's a panel up in the top corner called the environment panel that actually shows you all of the different things that you've saved. So it shows that my cool number exists um, and it has the value of five in it right now. We could change that and we could say my cool number is actually 10. And so if we hit enter there, now we can see in the environment, the my cool number object is out there. Um, it exists and it holds the value of 10 in it. And so this is a convenient way of looking to see what exists in, in your environment, what you can work with. Um, if you notice when I was typing here and I said my cool number, well, my cool number, um, instead of typing this backwards arrow assignment key manually, um, on a Mac you can press Alt or Option minus and it'll do it for you. If you're on Windows, you can also do Alt minus and it'll do it for you. And so that's kind of a, an easier shortcut than remembering to do the backwards arrow dash and then something. So that makes life a lot easier. Okay, so the other panels you have here, you have the environment panel, which is super important, and you'll rely on this all the time to see what you're working with. If you have a data set here, you can actually click on the name of the data set and it will open up a new tab and show you all of the columns and all of the rows, which is really nice. Um, you also have a history panel that I rarely use. Um, this just shows everything that you've ever typed in R. Connections, you can connect to databases through SQL or other things. Um, tutorial, you can learn how to do interactive stuff. Those, those interactive web pages that you're doing right now with RStudio, you can technically run them inside RStudio instead of in the browser somehow, but you don't need to worry about that. So typically you just leave this pane on environment. 
This pane down here, um, before I show you files here, this will show any plots that get generated. And so if we just type like plot one through five, so the colon there means through, so it's going to plot the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. So if we hit enter, we should get a really ugly little plot here. It's really shrunken down on my screen because I have it zoomed in and there's not a lot of space. If we click on this zoom button, it will make it bigger and we can actually resize this window. And so there's the numbers one through five. Not the greatest plot, but it's there. Um, most of the time when you're creating plots in R, it will show up in this corner. Um, what I like to do often is um, kind of zoom it out like this. And if I have a second screen, I'll actually move this to the second screen. And then anytime I make any changes in R, it'll update on the second screen so I can watch both at the same time. Um, the packages panel shows you all of the different R libraries and R packages that you've installed. You can install your own, or you can install them for yourself here if you click on the install button. So if you've installed R for yourself on your computer, you probably need the tidyverse library that has all of the other packages like dplyr and tidyr and ggplot. And so you would start typing tidyverse and it would show up here. And then if you click install, it will install tidyverse and all of the packages that come with it. Um, there's a help page, or this is extremely important because it has all the documentation for all of the things that you'll do. One important thing for this class is you're not going to have every single command for ggplot memorized. Nobody does. Even the guy who invented ggplot, Hadley Wickham, he looks up stuff in the help documentation all the time. You have to. It's impossible to know everything um, about every single R function. And so what you should do is you rely on this help section a lot. Um, to get here, if you want to look up specific functions in R, like mean, if we want to see how we figure out the average of something, we can, in the console, we can type question mark mean, and if we press enter, it will open up the help page for mean. And if you scroll through, it tells you, like, here's how you use it. You feed it some x value, which is an R object. So typically, you have to feed it some number thing um, or a date because you can figure out the average date for a time interval, I guess. Um, there are other arguments you can uh, include. If you scroll down further, it'll have examples. And so here it's saying, like, create this thing called x that repeats from 0 to 10 50 times, and it's going to create, or it's going to figure out the average of that. Um, instead of typing this question mark mean here, you can also just type the name of the, of the function in this section, so we can search for plot, for example. And if we click on enter, here's a whole bunch of different plot functions. And so you can click on one of these, and it'll show the help file for plot. So that's what this panel does. You can resize these panels, which is convenient. Um, so sometimes you might want to shrink that over to the side. Um, so one thing we've been doing, and what you've been doing in your um, uh, exercises online is you type R code and then you run it and then something happens. Um, if you want to save this so that you can do this later, it's like you don't want to retype a my cool number again. Um, you want to just have that in one location and then just run it later. Um, so what we can do is instead of typing directly in the console, that's kind of not best practice. Stuff has to run in the console. That's how R actually runs the code and, and you get output. But it's best to not actually type there. It's best to type in something called a script or a document that has all of the text that you're working with. And so if you come to File, New File, R Script, it will open up another panel up in the top left corner for your script. And so you'll notice there's this icon with this little R logo on it. This is an R script. So everything you type here in this script area is code. So here we can say, my cool number equals five. Um, just because I have it here, though, doesn't mean it's actually run. So right here we said my cool number is five, but if we look over in the environment panel, my cool number is currently one, two, three, four still, because that's what it was the last, like we ran it and it made it one, two, three, four. So if I want this part to actually run, um, I could select it, copy it, come here, paste and press enter, but that's like um, laborious. You don't want to do that. Um, so what you can do instead is if you click on this run button, it will run the current line 
Um, or if you have a selection, it'll run just that selection there. Um, instead of clicking on the button, you can also use the keyboard, which is kind of the best way to do this. If you press Control Enter or Command Enter on a Mac, it will do that copying and pasting for you. So I just hit Control Enter or Command Enter, and it came down here. It put my cool number as five and then updated it there. So then instead of retyping it, I can say, oh, my cool number really needs to be 50. And so I change it there and then run it. And now it's 50. Or it can be whatever that number is with lots of zeros. And now it's changed. And so it lets you change all of the, the text here. And the nice thing about that is that I can save this script. And then I can come back later and run it um, and create the same my cool number, even if it's not there anymore. And this kind of is a history of, or it's not the history, this is the history. So if you ever mess anything up, um, like we don't want to create my cool number and have it be 5, 50, 50, 000, or 500,000 and go back to 5. We just want it to be 5 right off the bat. And so this is just kind of a list of all the instructions you have to do to get the analysis you want. So if you're building a plot, you're going to tinker with the plot. You're going to change access labels. You're going to change the colors and stuff. And you're going to do all of the editing here in the script panel. And then you're going to run those lines and send them down to the console and have it show up there. Um, so because the, most of the emphasis is here in this corner, what I end up doing normally is I shrink the console down so it just shows like a line or two. Um, and then I do most of my typing and my work here. And then I check on the environment panel to make sure that um, everything is working the way it's supposed to be working. And so that is how you use RStudio in general.